welcome to another NFL Picks video where I'll be picking all of the NFL games for this upcoming Sunday and Thursday uh, for Thanksgiving football. Decided to do this today, a little Wednesday edition, so that I don't have to be bothered with it tomorrow. Tomorrow is the holiday. Too much cooking, eating, cleaning, and watching football to be bothered to make this video, so we'll get it out of the way tonight. I will make all the picks. If you're new here, this is the board. I'll make the picks, you criticize the picks, and then we'll revisit this in a week to see how we did. Uh, so far on the year, I'm 160. Nice two even round numbers. Picking games, 100 correct, 60 incorrect. Last week was my worst week of the season. I went 7-7. Seven and seven. Um, Got a little too bold and a little too much in you know, some places that I shouldn't have. But I'm going to switch it up, do a different strat, do a lot of chalk today. So here are my picks for week 12. Can't believe it's already week 12. Can't believe it's already Thanksgiving. Who would have guessed? All right, so we begin with the Thanksgiving Day games, uh, the two of the three that remain. Uh, Texans and the Lions, it looks like Kenny Galladay is going to be out once again for the Detroit Lions. Uh, I think this has been the best half of Deshaun Watson football we've seen this year. Uh, he started out with a very murderous row schedule against the Chiefs, Ravens, and Steelers, and on the other side of that, he's just playing really well. He's really dominating, and it's a it's a damn good thing they didn't trade Will Fuller. So I'm going to stick with the hot hand with this one. I'm going to go with uh, Deshaun Watson and the Texans to beat the Lions on Thanksgiving. Next, we have the Washington football team and the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, Washington football team, I still believe, is pretty banged up. And despite how well Alex Smith has done, you know, in the, the fact that he's had to step in this year, which no one saw coming, uh, I think the Cowboys might be a little bit better. And this might be a little recency bias because they just beat the Vikings. But at the same time, I think on paper, they're the better team. Uh, especially on offense. So it really could come down to who can score the most points. And I think with Dallas, you're not going to need to score 31 like you did against the Vikings last week. I think 24, 25, 26 should be able to do it. So I'll go with the Cowboys in this matchup and uh, give them sole possession of the NFC East division, at least for the moment. Next, we have the Ravens and Steelers, which has been pushed back to Sunday because of an excessive amounts of positive COVID tests on the Ravens side. Steelers are not happy about it, and I don't blame them. This is the second time that this has happened to them. They lose the primetime game, and they have to spend an extra couple of days getting ready, which I guess is a double-edged sword because I think most teams would be excited about the fact that a short week gets turned into a long week, but, you know, it's 2020. I, I'm not really here to uh, here to criticize when they're upset about games getting moved around. Um, I don't think it matters anyway. I think the Ravens are on the downswing. Yes, they're 6-4, and four, but they're not a very good 6-4. and four. The Steelers, on the other hand, are a very good 10-0. and 0. Yes, the schedule has been somewhat soft in places like Jacksonville last week, but I still think that they're good enough um, that they're going to continue their winning ways. I don't know when on the schedule they're going to face a loss unless they start resting players in Week 15. So I'm going to go with the Steelers in this one over the Ravens. Next, we got the Raiders and the Falcons. I think the Raiders are for real. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Kansas City Chiefs both times this season, and uh, they should be able to handle the Atlanta Falcons. I think Julio Jones looks like he might be questionable again. I don't know what it is with the hamstring on him this year, but it's, it was bothering him enough uh, last week that he had to come out of the game for a bit, and uh, Russell Gage saw more targets as a result. So I'm going to go with the Raiders in this one. You know, credit to John Gruden and Mike Mayock for putting together and coaching a team that is looks that looks like it's uh, ready to take the next step sooner than I would have thought. Next, we have the Chargers and the Bills. Looking forward to this game. Bills come off the bye week. Chargers come off a win. Justin Herbert versus Josh Allen. This should be a, a really nice quarterback duel. And I'm going to go with uh, my pick being Josh Allen and the Bills in this one because they'll be extra rested after the bye. I wanted to go with Justin Herbert just because he's been, just been so incredible his rookie season. But at the same time, he doesn't play defense. So I have to go with the uh, the Bills offense, give them a little bit of an edge in this matchup. I'm very excited to see this game. Uh, next, we have the Giants and the Bengals. Um, the Bengals will not be playing Ryan Finley, which, I, yeah, Brandon Allen is probably the better quarterback. I would agree. I would definitely start Brandon Allen. Why is Ryan Finley on the team? If he's just a backup, just to be there to be like a prep guy in meetings and stuff, it's a wasted roster spot. Ryan Finley's not good at football. I've been saying this since he was drafted from NC State years ago. I didn't even bother doing a scouting report on him back then before I did YouTube, and I sort of just did scouting reports on my own because I thought he was pretty terrible at the position. Um, but yeah, I mean, that aside, Kelvin Harmon was a pretty decent receiver, so that's probably the bulk of his success from NC State. Um, so rant aside, <laughs> uh, it's smart that they're going with Brandon Allen. However, I don't think it's going to make a difference. It's going to depreciate the values of all the talent they have around him, T. Higgins, uh, Giovanni Bernard, because Joe Mixon is also out. 
Um, so we're likely uh, going to see the Bengals struggle for the rest of the season without Joe Burrow and uh, lead them to a pretty high top five overall draft pick in 2021. I'm going with the Giants. It's a very long winded way of saying I pick the Giants. Next, we have the Titans and the Colts. Uh, very, very important game. Very potential good game on paper anyway. Uh, to determine the fate of the NFC South lead. And I think I'm going to have to give this one to the Colts. Um, I just think their defense is better. I'm very excited to see this game. Um, Ryan Tannehill should be able to keep this close. It's just going to depend on which version of Phillip Rivers they get and uh, whether or not they correctly use that stable of running backs that they have. I don't understand what the problem is with Jonathan Taylor. Next, we have the Cardinals and the Patriots. Um, Patriots are not... Oh, no, wait, I'm sorry. I'm skipping my own game. <laughs> Next, we have the Panthers and the Vikings. Um, maybe it was just, you know, Freudian slip that I wanted to skip this because I know how bad it's going to be. Uh, so the uh, the initial injury report for today for the Vikings comes out, and it doesn't look good because Harrison Smith is on it as it did not practice, and that's worrisome. So we'll have to see what that is on Friday. But the fact that they don't have a lot of safeties on this roster scares me because that means Josh Metellus or maybe Chris Boyd moves to safety in a starting spot opposite Anthony Harris. And I think against uh, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, and Curtis Samuel, that's not good. So um, I'm going to assume that there's something seriously wrong with Harrison Smith if he's a did not practice on the first day because he's a really, really tough player. Um, so even with even with Harrison Smith in there, you know, the fact that he's going to be missing practice and whatnot, I think this is still probably the Panthers game to lose. I'm going to pick the Panthers to win this one, and we're going to officially shut down the Vikings season after this loss as they fall to 4-7. and seven. Next, we have the Cardinals and the Patriots that I tried to skip to uh, for some reason. Um, I'm going to make this pretty quick. I'm going with the Cardinals just because I think um, I think Bill Belichick is probably at the end of his rope with this defense, and the fact that Kyler Murray is such an X factor, I don't know how even Bill Belichick prepares for this. Um, he's done pretty well against Lamar Jackson, but this is a different kind of offense, you know, with Cliff Kingsbury calling the shots. So, you know, trying to be able to... Um, account for DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Christian Kirk, and Kyler Murray. I think it's going to be a difficult task, given that the talent that they do not have available to them on the New England Patriots defensive side. Next, we have the Dolphins and the Jets. I question, for the first time, a Brian Flores decision. There was no reason to bench Tua at the end of that game. I understand you're losing, but you might as well expose him to that because it's going to happen. And, um, you know, I, I think you just sort of cripple his confidence Um with that decision just you know he gets into that situation see if he can dig himself out of it see how he responds no point in benching him i don't agree with that whatsoever i don't think it's going to be necessary against the jets jets are awful um i'm going to go with the dolphins no reason to not pick against them next we have the uh, browns and the jaguars miles garrett is going to miss another game but i don't think it matters because we are now moving on to mike glennon as the starting quarterback for jacksonville and, uh, I, you know, even with the defense being as porous as it's been in Cleveland uh, due to injuries and a lack of overall talent at the linebacker position, uh, I still think this is the Browns game to win because they'll be able to manage it very well with the running game and uh, Baker Mayfield doing what he does when needed. So I'm going to take the Browns over the Jaguars. It'll probably be nice for Cleveland to get out of Ohio and enjoy a, a somewhat decent weather game in Jacksonville. So we'll get to see um, them play a little bit better, having, you know, given the harsh conditions that they've faced the last uh, month or so. Next, we have the Saints and the Broncos. Broncos got a sneaky win last week. I don't think that that's going to be something that continues. Saints are going to win. I don't think it matters who plays the quarterback in this who plays quarterback for the Saints in this game. Taysom Hill, I guess, kind of, you know, shut up some of the naysayers and the critics, if you will, me being one of them. I don't think that this is a, a sustainable career path for Taysom Hill. He's definitely not the future at the quarterback position, but they spent a whole bunch of money making him a, uh, what was it, a first-round tendered protected player. I don't remember the exact logistical wording for it, but $21 million, you got to find out what he is. So um, I'm going to go with the, uh, the Saints in this one, the much more talented team, the much better coach team. Uh, I don't think the Broncos are going to surprise anybody this week. Next, we have the 49ers and the Rams. I'm going to give this one to the Rams. Uh, 49ers are basically dead in the water at this point. I don't really see any reason in picking them other than just a random trap game upset. So I'll go with the Rams all day in this matchup. Next, we have the Chiefs and the Bucks. Bucks seem to have a little bit of kryptonite when it comes to the offense for some reason. The defense has not played like it did in the first half of the season. The Chiefs, on the other hand, are, have only one loss, and that is to the Raiders team that has proven to be very good. So I think uh, it would be hard to pick against them. Very excited to see Antoine Winfield go up against uh, Pat Mahomes. 
Um, so yeah, this will be a game on my radar for that reason. Other than that, I, I think picking against the Chiefs would be a cardinal sin at this point, so I'm going to go with that. Next, we have the Bears and the Packers that you can barely see over my shoulder here. Uh, this is easy. Packers don't have to talk a lot about it. It doesn't matter who plays quarterback for the Chicago Bears. They can't run the football. The offense is anemic. It doesn't matter that they had a bye week. I, I think the Packers are going to be more prepared. Aaron Rodgers versus a divisional opponent is always money. Um, if the Packers lose this, boy, Packers fans are probably going to have to go on like witness protection or something or wellness checks. Um, for the Monday night game, we have the Seahawks and the Eagles. Couldn't be more unenthused about this matchup. Uh, I think the Seahawks will win just because the uh, the Eagles are just treading water probably harder than the 49ers so far this season. Carson Wentz has really regressed this year. The calls have already begun to start Jalen Hurts at the quarterback position, which, you know, if, if this situation plays out, and, you know, I understand they're still in the running for the NFC East division to get into the playoffs, which is horrendous. The fact that somebody with a losing record is likely going to make uh, likely going to host a playoff game at the end of the year, which I'm also kind of rooting for at the same time because, woo, chaos. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think that there's going to be a time where we do see Jalen Hurts eventually because then we're just going to have, um, you know, uh, I don't think they want to witness the car crash that's going to be the rest of the season if they get eliminated from the playoffs. That is Carson Wentz. Uh, and his struggles this year. So I'm going with the Seahawks. I find it that it's going to be extraordinarily difficult for this defense to cover both Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. And uh, yeah, it should be a nice Monday night game for Russell Wilson. So those are my picks. Hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you agree or disagree, and I'll see you in the next one.